Y'all ever just go to the Philippines and place your bets on chicken fights? But Weathering Waves, it's like that one game that I won't mention because we, we all know it's like that one game. You guys remember Pal World trying to sue Pokemon? I always wonder why Hoyoverse doesn't do that with like other games. But today we're gonna be doing what I call a sandwich. Like not doing the sandwich, making a sandwich. We're gonna say one good thing about this game, then we're gonna say a roast. To make things nice and friendly. But yeah, we'll start off uh, positively. So the first cool thing about this game I want to talk about is the combat. Because it is fun as heck and is carrying this game by a mile. Now, you know how there's like the one cool kid in class? And then there's the other kid who observes the cool kid? Yeah, that is basically this game with the other game we will not mention. You basically have your hit hit. Elemental burst, elemental skill, but you also got that PETA hotline where you can summon Mother Earth to just ooh, ooh, ah, ah, all over your opponent's face. Also, chain switching is a very pleasant experience once you're used to it. You can just be hitting, you dodge, your thing glows on the side, you're like, okay, come back, go Tangela. The enemies that you do fight, especially the bosses, do actually feel pretty unique like design wise especially they all feel different as heck you got the fucking opera singing robot from near automata <laughs> except less sexy this thing doesn't give me a semi and then we have ice chlamydia demon i have no idea what the fuck that is but the boss designs and their combat mechanics are all really good i hope we get more designs like that and not just like Electric Memphis, Tempest Memphis, which their designs do look good, but they're basically just like a Whopper flower, just different colors, a little bit of a different moveset, but that's kind of it. But yeah, cool enemies, cool combat. This game is easier to play for a long time just because the main thing you do is insanely engaging. Now, the cool kid in class is also insanely engaging. It's just that he's been around for four years now. So switching up who you're making snoo snoo to is not the worst. Now that we have said something mildly nice, it's time to initiate the roast. I'm not gonna be that harsh, don't worry. I'm just, you know, saying. So the first obvious thing is the English voice acting. Or you know what? I'm not even gonna say English voice acting, just English acting. Now, I know this is this studio's first attempt at an English dub in a game, so I'm not gonna be too harsh. I will say, Chisha's and Scar's voice acting performances are actually pretty damn good, especially Scar, my god. <laughs> Interesting, Rover. But all the other voice acting is kind of how I say poopoo kaka play this game in anime language. Because the Japanese dub is fucking amazing, just like Punishing Grey Raven. Now I know this is this studio's first English voiced game, so maybe they just don't know what acting is, especially since it's not an English studio. They're just like, all right, say the English words. Very good, now leave. The voice actor's like, um, I don't think I did a good job. They're like, we do not care. Get out of the studio. That was my old Japanese man. I don't know if it's Japanese or Chinese, but whatever. <laughs> but yeah, which is really interesting because Genshin was Hoyoverse's first English dub game. Correct me if I'm wrong. And that was amazing, bro. Like right off the bat. I do have a bit of hope with all the feedback that this game is getting and how open the game is to said feedback. I feel like the voice acting will improve in the future. I'm fucking praying to God. But until then, I'm gonna play in Japanese. I recommend you guys do too. All right, another positive thing. Uh, the story is kind of okay. It definitely gets better in the later half of act five and six. And some of the companion quests, especially um the green haired dude, I don't know his name, are pretty good message wise. And towards the end, they all just get good. Like this game has amazing climaxes, but the journey to the climax is kind of mid. But the thing is, we always remember the final bus, so it kind of works out. The story does this thing which kind of bothers me. This is going to turn into a slight roast, where they add all these fucking unique terms for absolutely no reason. Instead of monsters, they use tacit discord. 
why do they use this term? I don't know. It's because they want to sound fancy, I guess. They don't want to be the basic bitch monster kid. But let me tell you, I prefer the basic bitch monster kid. Like, it's simple enough to understand. Why complicate it? Like, this game should basically have its own dictionary for unique terms that exist for absolutely no reason. The thing with the other game is that terms like ley line, resin, are all for unique game mechanics and systems. This game, just for simple and normal things, uses fancy words for no reason. I don't get it. But so far, if we're comparing this story to Mondstadt, which is Genshin's like first act, I will say I do like this a little better. It's pretty good. Now, roast time. Probably gonna be the last roast time because there isn't much bad in this game. The big thing that kind of bothers me, and I can't pretend like it doesn't, is that it's so similar to the other game. Like, it's literally copy-paste of every mechanic, just with a different word. Now, this isn't necessarily a bad thing. Tower of Fantasy did that, and that game is just fucking dead as fuck. But I don't think that's gonna happen to this game, because it's just made better, which makes me happy. But I just wish they added more unique things. Like, they have the animals in combat, which is sick. They have one or two things here and there, sure. Like, my friend watched me play this for three minutes while we were drunk the other day. Also, the Genshin devs made a new game, and I was just like, <laughs> well, you see. Like, this game has chests, they have sealies, they have open-world challenges. Everything exploration-wise, same as Genshin. Like, I feel like they could have done something different with all the time they had. Like, I get Genshin's amazing and don't change what isn't broken, but this is a new game. You're not changing anything, just make something different. Even with that said, though, I'm not gonna stop playing it because it is a fun-ass game. I enjoy everything about it. And why is that? Because I enjoy Genshin. Like, it's the same thing. <laughs> I am very happy that the combat feels unique in this game, though. Which is what this studio does the best. Because punishing Grey Raven, the combat is fucking god tier. With that said, though, that is all the roasting I must do. I didn't really talk about the characters that much. Like, they don't stand out that much to me so far. There are a couple that I really like. Like, Alto is my fucking boy. This guy has such a colorful personality, and his little monster daughter is adorable. If I had to pick a favorite character, it would probably be those two. And then there's also Scar and Camilla. Oh my god, this bad bitch! Who are both pretty great in their respective terms. Scar, I want to be playable, like, immediately. He's fun as shit. The character designs in this game are pretty much just more adulty. Then Genshin, oh shit, I said the word. Like there's a lot of jiggle physics. There's a lot more shown in this game, which I do kind of like, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm a D-Gen, don't judge. I'm just hoping more characters showcase like unique traits in the future. However, if you do play the Japanese dub, the characters immediately feel like they have more personality. So just another reason to partake in that. With all that said, guys, let me know what your favorite part of this game is. I know for phone players, there's been a lot of issues with lag and stuff. So that is unfortunate. I hope they fix that real quick. With all that said, guys, let me know your thoughts. All right, real quick, we're going to do a speed run of a tier list based on likability. So, best boy, I don't care what y'all say is a fun dapper dude. It constantly feels like he's scheming, which makes it so perfect that his little sidekick is a fucking... <laughs> nah, bro, he has layers to him. Like he kind of gives drunk uncle vibes while always plotting in the background, but he's also just funny. Like every time he's on screen, I'm just like, yes, Alto, do your thing. <laughs> and then his daughter, bro. <laughs> I love how he's like, nah, don't call me uncle, I'm not old. And then she's like, okay, uncle. <laughs> the chemistry is so perfect. <laughs> but as for her, I forget her name. She's kind of fun. I like her transformation. Again, in the JP dub, it's so good, they're dynamic. She's like, did I do good? He's like, you did great. Now get out of my space. It's perfect. <laughs> Should I put them both in S? No, I'll put her, like, top of A. He's an S, though, yeah. Next up, we got the rover, the MC, who actually speaks. I forgot to mention that. Good shit. Now, if we were going off design, this bad bitch in S tier, without a doubt, I don't really like how, like, the choices you make in dialogue 
literally don't affect the response of the other party. Like, bitch, why you give me the freedom of choice if it doesn't matter? But yeah, the MC with Amnesia Stick has been done to death. Overall, just pretty mid B tier, I would say. Maybe C, but we'll leave him there. Next, we have Mother Nature Plant Girl. Now, there's this meme on Twitter I keep seeing about this chick, where if you plant endangered flowers over a dead body, they'll never get the dead body. Personally, this is the five star I want the most. She's the healer, the Chi Chi of this game, except she's more colorful and not dead inside and outside. Overall, I do like her quite a bit. I'll put her in like mid A. She's kind of fun. I don't specifically know who this is. I'm thinking it's the old general from the previous wars who kind of disappeared after the fight, but we haven't seen him in game yet. He's gonna be maybe cool. But as for the green haired dragon man, yeah, he's S tier. He doesn't show much emotion like at all, but his story quest, like all his comrades disappearing in the rain was so fucking well done. The music, he stands there in silence. Like he doesn't visibly show emotion, but you can feel emotion, which is something this game does very differently from Genshin. Like they don't shove feelings down your throat as much. They let you kind of take it in, which I respect. Scar, bro. <laughs> No, he's not above Alto. This is my husband, bro. But yeah, I'm praying to God he becomes playable. I would fucking wail for him. <laughs> they cut out a cutscene of him being unhinged as fuck, which bothers me. I recommend searching it up on YouTube. It's like in the beta, where he basically just kills a man while laughing like a crazy person. <laughs> which he is, and that's why we love him. He is in horny jail right now, or just normal jail. I'm sure he'll get out in like an update or two. <laughs> Next up, we have the five star I wanted simply because I find her very attractive. Her color scheme is top tier. I love the whole martial artist motif in any game, so it's kind of perfect. Personality wise, she's wholesome and kind of old school. She did help us in the final act. She was like, go, leave me behind in typical fashion. A tier, pretty good, not bad. Yeah, yeah. Next, we got the Jingle Beast, I mean, Furry Nature Man. So, his character quest, I actually liked a lot because they kind of left it up to interpretation. They didn't directly tell you, oh, he's this person. No, they, they kind of let you be like, oh, right, okay. But yeah, aside from him being a Chad of the wilderness, I do like the lion dancing thing he does. Yes, a lot of people will compare him to Gaming. But they made this character before Gaming was ever even announced. So technically Genshin copied this game? Nani? I'm pretty sure that's not the case. It's just Kowinkydink, Liyue, and this Chinese area have the same kind of character. But I'm going to leave him at the top of B. All right, so next up we got Yin Lin, the Zami Mami, one of the four characters' names who I remember and will never forget. She is the equivalent of Lisa and Yelan's love child, which automatically puts her in S tier. The jiggle physics as she's using her alt cemented this game in my mind that this is adultery Genshin. She also, she's also one of those characters who has them layers, player. But yeah, I've heard mixed opinions on her character quest. I personally liked it. It's the first one I did. It was a pretty interesting experience, but S tier, yes. Next, we got the uh, magistrate chick who I, I'll be honest, I don't really give a shiz about. She is attractive, but I'm gonna put her in C. Just because personality wise, it's like a, a pancake without maple syrup, which you might as well just throw on the ground and step on. I personally like her little guard chick a bit more, Sunhua. I think that's how you say the name. Because in her idol animation, she tries to force a smile, which is fucking adorable. With that said, she is kind of a simp for this chick, who I don't really see the appeal to. But still, I'll put her like at the bottom of B pretty good. Next, we got this chick who I know nothing about, but she looks like she's from Fire Emblem Awakening. I forgot the name of the character. I'll put her on screen. But yeah, I want to know more about her because her design is pretty top tier in my opinion. Kind of love her. She's cute, but kind of a bad bitch. She's fun to use. But uh, yeah, who else don't we know anything about? We don't know anything about uh, Alexander Anderson over here. Except for that he owns a boxing gym and has quite a bit of money. 
which I will say I do like both of those qualities a rich man who can fish me next we got Shisha who is the equivalent of Amber except I'll be honest I kind of like Amber a bit more but for this game's standards of early game four stars I'll say she's like top of B tier She's very outgoing personality wise, but it's like, you know what you get. You hear her say two sentences, you're like, ah, so this is your character archetype. Next we'll do Yang Yang, the other character at the beginning, who I just, I, I don't care. She's fun to use. I love her style in combat, but like personality, like the English dub especially, bro. She is just exposition character. The JP dub, her voice is pretty good, but like, Similar to the Magistrate, there, there's nothing really there for me to be like, oh wow, super epic character. She did protect us at the end, similar to Baby Girl over here. It's just that Baby Girl is more colorful, and she's just, I am just nice wife material, which is debatable. Next we got Thicko Bicko. That is a nickname I just created, but I kind of love her. She seems to follow the trait of Sleepo Beepo characters. She's like Sayu, except visually the exact opposite. And also, she's important because she has her roles to play and does her damn job, even if she's kind of tired. With those straight in minds, overworked, pink haired, thick, big booba, yeah, I kind of love her A tier. Then we got Mortsiffy Baby. This guy's kind of a hunk. I kind of like him. He is kind of an upstanding dude in the sense that he's the go-to character where if we need to know something, we're just like, might as well call the Mortiffy Hotline. And he's always like, ugh. What do you want? Unless you're a green haired dragon man, then he's like, at your service, my king. And his alt, when he kind of goes like crazy face mode, I want to see more of that in like his dialogue. Cause we don't know much of that side. Still, he's like high top of B tier-ish. I do kind of like the guy. Yeah. Next we got Bai Ji, who is very thick. I saw her and I was like, damn, that is a bad bitch. But then she opened her mouth. Five sentences later, I was like, hmm kind of uninteresting <laughs> like she's similar to yang yang she just gives you information without really providing much like soul into who she is even with the amazing jp dub she has a good voice too still c tier might go up in the future yeah yeah and we have this chick who i saw in one cutscene with the the magistrate chick she is a baddie she seems like she has a lot of layers and is colorful but we'll see in the future. I'm just gonna put her in maybe cool. I think she will be. I just realized when I took a quick break, Scar disappeared from S tier, but he's still there. But we also have Camillo, who we saw for one cutscene and immediately became S tier. She is also very playful, might potentially want to murder you, which incentivizes me as a player to pull for her. I still remember the one part of dialogue when she said, <laughs> This studio knows how to make villains appealing, but that is going to be the tier list aspect of this video. With that in mind, guys, hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and have a good one.